Let's bring in uh, my good friend Luke Grant for his analysis and all of that. The good news in New South Wales and the buck passing that's going on in Victoria. The voice of the people, 2GB Radio Post. Luke Grant coming to us now from Sydney. Hey, I Peter. tell you, you know, good to see you, Luke. New you South too. Wales is forging ahead. You've had some dark days, but the numbers are just so strong. And every measure you're ahead of your vaccination forecast, you've got all your construction guys back on deck, uh, on site on Monday at 100%. In Victoria, as we know, they've been locked out. They'll be locked down and shut down for another two weeks. Uh, yeah. You can almost smell freedom in New South Wales. And in Victoria, we are maybe in three or four weeks' time going to get an extra hour of outdoor exercise and no great hope. We've lost our grand final uh, for the second year running. It doesn't look like any of us will be at Flemington come November. The contrast yeah. couldn't be starker, could it? No, it, it really couldn't. Uh, you just made a point there, you know, maybe... It'll be open in a, in a couple of months. I actually think, from what my listeners are saying to me, they believe that when Gladys delivered her roadmap and said 70% and then 80%, they actually believe that something would happen. And there's been, I think, three lockdowns in New South Wales. It's by far the longest one. It, it hasn't been the go-to play. And, and this has been, as we know, you know, just dreadful for everyone, particularly those in small business. But there is a belief that when that 70% number is reached, that things will be different. I don't know that that's true in Victoria. I'm not there, you are, but I, I know, all I've got is a sense of what listeners tell me. And it, it's almost a running joke. I wonder when the next Daniel Andrews lockdown is. And I don't know that there's mm -hmm. a lot of confidence. And you and I have spoke forever about, you know, what, what you need to get the vaccination. And I think we agreed freedom is the big gift. You know, get your freedom back, not $300, that's ridiculous. And there is a sense, yeah, a real belief that freedom will return in New South Wales. And I, I think in Victoria, you know, perhaps there isn't. Uh, other than that, I can't explain it. It's certainly not the availability of doses. That's been sorted out. You can't, uh, New South Wales tonight, about 85% first dose. I mean, that number is unbelievable. I think it just comes down to trust. Do you believe your leader? Uh, when they yeah. say that you do this? And, I, and I'll return that to you in terms of freedom. I think that's yes. the, the compact between the Victorian people and the Premier has been lost and even the Premier's supporters doubt his word and I think that's that's trouble for a politician. There was a bit of yeah. a blue yesterday between the Victorian Premier and the Federal Treasurer. This was after Daniel Andrews in his press conference had, had a jab at the Morrison government. He tends to do this, you know, on days where his numbers, new COVID case numbers are at record highs. He picks yeah. a fight with Greg Hunt about vaccinations. He usually picks yeah. a fight with the Treasurer or the PM about money. And this was all about how much money was going to the construction industry. He was arguing, compared to New South Wales, the Victorians were jibbed. This is the Treasurer's <laughs> response this morning. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to take the bait and give the Victorian government the distraction it wants. The reality is that we have provided more economic support to the Victorian people and Victorian businesses on a per capita basis than any other state. Right now, we're paying around twice what the state government is to Victorian households and businesses. Uh, the reality is that the Victorian government chose not to put construction businesses in their scheme, whereas it was in New South Wales scheme. Uh, that, that is the point. New South Wales put construction in their package. Victoria did not. Andrews wouldn't yeah. blame everyone yesterday, but take responsibility himself. How does he get away with it, mate? You're a journalist. You've been in the media a long time. How can he just lie like that and get away with it? Well, he, he can't if he's held to account appropriately. So you need a workable parliament. And of course, the numbers are as they are in Victoria. You only have to look at that like book foods thing. But the, the compliant media and, and, and basically the, the uh, abuse of any journalist, I remember Rachel Blacksendale from The Australian, the abuse she copped on social media for just asking, you know, serious questions like these ones, Peter, to Daniel Andrews. Mm. Um, they, he, gets, he gets the benefit of the doubt, but this is all about the politics. Again, something you and I have been saying all along. You've got Anastasia, you've got Dan, you've got McGowan, and you've got Alvo, and probably Wayne Swan is the ringleader, saying, hey, listen, the lodge is up for grabs here. For God's sake, don't make it too easy for them. It's terrible to have to say that. But I have no other explanation. But you know what I saw, which was fascinating? New South Wales, and I loved how Dan said at his press conferences, oh, you know, in New South Wales, things are, you know, we wish our friends are there well.
But uh, yesterday we had Gladys saying, by the way, construction back 100% in New South Wales today. And I thought this was absolutely priceless. The state government is allowing in areas where you couldn't normally drink, if you're going for a picnic, you actually can have a drink. Construction open and you can drink if you're out in a picnic. It doesn't need, it's not a snide remark, but I, I thought it was uh, um, maybe not tasteful, but a very clever political tactic, didn't you? Yeah, well, I remind people who are not in Victoria, I can sit on a picnic rug for two hours only. I can take my mask off to have a cappuccino, but I can't take my glass, mask off to have a glass of wine as if one yeah. is allowed and one is not. But that's the rules. Yeah. That's the rules in Victoria. Yeah, hey, rules. This is an interesting point. Most of my viewers may not have clued into this, but when politicians do an interview, they issue a transcript. So someone goes on yeah. with Luke Grant, you put them under pressure, Luke, it doesn't matter who they are in federal politics, Labor or Liberal, even the Greens, they put out a transcript and it's available to the gallery. Would it surprise yeah. you to know that the Victorian Premier does not issue a transcript of his media interviews or his press conferences, so there can be no checking back over previous uh, media conferences? Only because I've gone looking for them, Peter. You know, sometimes I wasn't prepared to sit there for the hour and a half. I was prepared just to skim through a transcript. You're right, there isn't one. Um, now, if you've got no, 90 don't. minutes to spare, you can go back and, you know, hit, hit fast forward or, or, uh, or re rewind and pause, but who wants to do that? It's, um, it's amazing. And now the other thing too, a uh, big fight today or this week about construction having mandatory vaccinations. It's mm. interesting they're now required for, for nurses and uh, aged care workers, their talk about teachers and others. Interestingly, yeah. Victoria Police with that out there today saying they're thinking about whether or not they make them compulsory for police officers. Now, that was not lost on me that you've got these people protesting that they don't like the idea of max, uh, uh, mandatory vaccination. You've got the police rounding them up. But the police themselves had not yet mm. decided whether they like the idea of mm. mandatory vaccinations. Yeah, leadership. You know, we're all, we're all in this together, so we're all going to do this. They come in contact with the public, particularly those protests and those riots. I mean, it makes, it makes absolute sense. We'll let XPC go and carry the can, so to speak. But uh, any, anywhere else, oh, you know, uh, it should be the case that if you're a government employee, if, if you've got medical reasons, fair enough, or any other legitimate objection, fair enough, that's got to be dealt with on a one-to-one -one basis. But if you're in contact with the public, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? And if you're a police officer arresting thugs at a riot, for goodness sake, um, yeah, that's a, that's a problem. Yeah, I think we should put it into public servants in the parliament, make the MPs... Yes. Have the vaccination they want everyone else to have, and that might sort things out. Luke, Grant, have a good weekend. Can, can I show you this just quickly? Um, there you yes, go. please. Go, uh, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming in behind the demons this weekend too. Long, long time that they have not had a flag. Let's hope they get there. Good luck. Beautiful. Good Thanks, to Luke. see you, Peter.